Good morning, and welcome to Nicole's Test Kitchen Steam Edition. Today, we're doing a very fun and creative project. We are making our own wacky watercolors. I found this concoction in the Ultimate Book of Kid Concoctions by John E. Thomas and Danita Pagel. As always, um, the description is in the description, sorry, the uh, title of the book as well as the ingredients are listed in the description of um, this post. So what we are going to need today are, is cornstarch, baking soda, light corn syrup and vinegar white vinegar and then food coloring so any type of food coloring that you have um, I just have the regular the food coloring here that you get in the store I also have a gel food coloring and to be honest I haven't tested these so I might test those out today also you need a uh, a container to mix up your concoction as well as um, a tablespoon and a teaspoon and then a container to separate out your mixture so that you could create different colors um, in my test I used paper cups um, but today I'm going to try this little tray so that I could have a, a palette of colors um, but you can use anything that you have. Also, um, a cup of water so that you can start um, testing out your, um, paint, your paints right away. And then, of course, a medium to test your paint on. So I have a, a piece of white paper and a canvas. All right, let's get started with our mixture. So I'm going to uh, mix the dry ingredients first and then I'll add uh, my liquid. Now remember, I don't know if you remember, but what happens when you mix baking soda and vinegar? There is um, a reaction, so just be careful um, that you keep the reaction contained. Um, so first I'm going to start out with my three tablespoons of baking soda. So I have my tablespoon. Make sure that you're working on a table that's covered because this is messy. Also you might want to have some paper towels around. So one, two, Three. Three tablespoons of baking soda. Put that out of the way. Next we're using uh, the cornstarch. Now be careful with cornstarch, it's very fine. So you don't want to breathe it in. You also don't want to try to not to get it everywhere. But of course, hopefully you're wearing your apron like I am. And you have, you know, your table covered and maybe some paper towels or a sponge to clean up any messes. So we're also going to be using three tablespoons of the cornstarch. One. Two. And three. All right, so I'm gonna throw this into a tray. I close up my cornstarch. Get that out of the way. And then I'm gonna start with my liquid ingredients, which is um, the corn syrup, the light corn syrup, and the vinegar. 
So I'm going to add the um, corn syrup first because I know as soon as I add the vinegar, then I'll have the reaction. So for the corn syrup, we need one and one half teaspoons of light corn syrup. So instead of using two different teaspoons, I'm just going to uh, use the half teaspoon and I'm going to do three, three of the half teaspoons, which will equal out to one and a half. So I have a half a teaspoon. And another half makes one. I want to make sure it gets all out there. And then the last half teaspoon will equal out to a total of one and a half teaspoons. Getting it all out, shaking it a little bit. You could also use your finger to get out any stuff that's left. But I think we got it mostly covered. I'm gonna put that into our tray and I'm gonna move the corn syrup out of the way. All right, so I have my spoon ready. I have my paper towels ready just in case. Oops, I forgot. I do need my tablespoon for my vinegar. Usually I would use a clean one, but since I forgot to put another tablespoon, I'm not gonna mind the little mess. Although I am going to clean it off with a paper towel so I don't have too much residue from my uh, dry ingredients. Now, if you're at home in your kitchen, you could just, you know, quickly rinse it out. Okay, so now I'm ready to add my vinegar and I need three tablespoons of the white vinegar. So, um, for any of you unsure about adding your liquid directly, you may want to measure out your vinegar into a separate container and then pour it in. Otherwise, you could just pour it in directly. Have an adult help you if the vinegar is too heavy. I'm doing this fast because of my rea the reaction. So you see how it's bubbling? We're getting that reaction. I think it's not quite as strong as because we have the cornstarch in there. But so let's stir. So we're stirring up our concoction and making our wacky watercolor. Stir, stir, stir. Make sure it gets all in there so it will become liquidy. And so the more you stir, um, the more liquidy it will get. It may seem pretty thick, but keep, keep stirring. Make sure it's all mixed in. A great thing about um, these watercolors is that you can use them right away in their liquid form. Um, you can also let them dry and then you can just go back and use them whenever you want. Remember when, when you let it dry, before you start using it, you have to wet your paintbrush and that will give the, uh, the watercolor effect. All right, so I think I have it all mixed in. So before I add some food coloring, I'm gonna actually pour it out into my little tray. So this is a very small tray and it's not very deep. So my colors, um, I probably will have more mixture than will fit in my tray. I'll probably just uh, pour the excess into, into different containers, but I wanted to create a palette that I can keep so that I can go back to it. Okay. 
so I'm gonna do this delicately. Um, if you're pouring it into a container, I you know suggest maybe using a funnel. I actually decided to create my concoction in one of my beakers so it has an automatic pour. But if you were making your con concoction in a bowl, you might want to use a, um, a funnel to add it into your specific container so it doesn't get everywhere. So let me start pouring. Okay. And also you have to remember to leave some room for your uh, food coloring. And I also just realized I forgot to have a stirrer, but I think I have one left over. So yes, you'll need to uh, have something to stir in your watercolor. I'm going to use a, um, a st little stick that I have. Uh, hopefully I have one that hasn't been used. It might add a little bit of mixing. Okay. So let me try my different food colorings. I'm first going to try these gel ones that I have. I haven't really worked with the gel food coloring that much, so I don't really know what's going to happen. Well, I'm not going to be using a... I guess we have a purple and a green. And then I'm going to use just the regular uh, the food coloring that you see mostly. Um, to create different colors, you get, you know, use different amounts of um, the different food coloring drops. I'm going to start with this purple. Ooh. Also, be careful. Make sure that, again, your table's covered. You may want to, if you have gloves, you may want to use gloves because it's going to be messy. Well. I am testing and maybe there's not even any left here. Another lesson, always test your food coloring or your ahead of time to make sure you actually have some. It's like we put it away without checking and see if, if there's any left, but it looks like we still have some green of the gel. And that looks pretty dark, so I'm just gonna use one drop of that and I'm going to stir. And stir, stir, stir. Now, if you are using a tray, like I said, you want to leave some room for the food coloring and making sure you're able to stir it without making a huge mess. I forgot to anticipate that, so I may get myself into trouble. But you know, that's the kind of trouble I like. I like making messes. So I have my green here. Okay, and I'm gonna throw this into my tray. And actually, I'm gonna get this book out of the way so I don't make a huge, huge mess. And I'm gonna take some paper towel. All right. So my gel food coloring was kind of a bust because my containers are mostly empty, but I did use the green. So now I'm going to use a red and just make a pure red. Uh, let's see. Four drops. And stirring in, stirring in. Mm. 
being very careful because this one I kind of overfilled. So I'm stirring, stirring, stirring. And you do have to stir a lot to make sure it's, it gets all the way through because your concoction's probably starting to dry a little bit and so it gets a little thicker. That one kind of went over the top, so I'm going to be careful. And conveniently, I have my cup of water, so I'm going <laughs> to rinse off my stick and see if I can... Hopefully, it won't affect the next color. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do a blue, or excuse me, a yellow. And actually, I might... Do a combination of yellow and red. To see if I can get an orangey color. Oops. Okay. Mix, mix, mix. Oh, maybe a red, a red orange. Okay, so I'm just gonna just add some colors randomly, and I'm gonna let them sit. So I'm gonna experiment on not stirring right away and see what happens. Oh goodness. another green since I contaminated one of my greens okay. so clear stick here and let's stir this up so I haven't done a lot of experimenting with food coloring and creating different colors with the food coloring so that's also a fun test to see how many drops of each color to create a different color I was trying to create a teal during my practice and it looks like I almost kind of did with this blue with just the single blue we'll see But that may be a, a, something you want to look up and test, maybe do a search and see what colors do you mix a food coloring to create teal or to create turquoise. Some, I know some food coloring packages, you know, sometimes on their label they list how many drops of each to create colors. Let me just stir these up quickly and then we can test them out. And it's okay if, they, if they've started to uh, thicken a little bit or dry out a little bit when you're stirring. You just have to st stir a little bit harder to get all the color mixed in. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure what color that's turning out to be. Ugh. Okay, oops. 
Also, be very careful about <laughs> making little messes. I was not as careful in my stirring. Okay, so let's test some of these out. Um, I am going to also show you one of the tests I did yesterday. So you can see this is completely dry. So I'm going to show you how um, once it's dry, how you just how you make it work. So let me get my mediums here. I have my paper and I have my canvas. Okay, and then I have two different paint brushes. So I'm gonna take my dry paintbrush and on the, the food coloring we just made, my liquidy, I'm just gonna dip it in and start painting. I might need to stir a little more. As you can tell, it's a, it's a little bit grainy. So that might mean you just need to stir more. Yeah, I think that's showing me I have to stir a little bit more. But anyway, let me test some of the others. Ooh, that's better. That one got stirred pretty well. Let's see how that came out. And then let's test it on the other one. So there's the orange test. Rinse my brush. Try out my other colors this green one that I made with the gel food coloring. Oh, and that's nice. And then that. And now let me show you the one I created yesterday that's dry. So all you do is you wet your paintbrush and then you just rub it along your paint. Make sure you get lots of color on it. And then this one I was trying to make a purple, I think. It didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to, but that's okay. And so here is the purple, or purple-ish, that I used, and that was uh, from the drop when, once it's dried. And so adding water to your paintbrush and then uh, putting it into the color will create the watercolor. So you can create these different watercolors and you can keep them. You know, put them into a, a container and you can keep them for as long as they last. And so that is today's Steam edition on Wacky Watercolors. I hope you have fun trying out this project. And again, experimenting with different color combinations. And I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.